What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released iOS 15.6 to the general public after more than two months of beta testing. Now in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15.6, tvOS 15.6, HomePodOS 15.6, watchOS 8.7, and macOS Monterey 12.5. But in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and discussing what is new in this software. So taking a look at the size of this update, you can see it came in right around 555 megabytes. So it should be about half of a gigabyte if you are coming from 15.5. So let's take a look at the build number for this update. If we go into our settings, go to general about 15.6. We can see the build number is 19G71. And if we scroll down to the modem firmware, you can see on the iPhone 12 series, it is 2.70.01. Those numbers will be different though, depending on your model of iPhone. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 15.6? And the first thing is inside of our settings for Safari. So if we go down to our Safari settings right here, then scroll down a little bit until we get to clear history and website data. When we tap on that, when we tap on clear history and data, we get a new option here to close all currently opened tabs. So it says, do you also want to close open tabs? This will not affect tabs in your tab groups. So that is a new option there when you clear your website history. And speaking of Safari, this update also fixes an issue where a tab may revert back to a previous page. So for example, if you went into a tab, if you went out of a tab and into another one, it may show the previous page you were on instead of the page you were trying to go to. And you'd have to tap on this forward button right there. It's happened to me a couple times. We also get a fix for a very interesting bug related to the dock and music applications. So you can see down here, I have Spotify in my dock and I don't have Apple Music installed on my device. Now, if I were to go into the App Store, this is iOS 15.5, by the way, if I downloaded Apple Music and go back to my home screen, take a look at that. It downloads Apple Music and puts it in the dock to replace Spotify. So it doesn't do that with any other application. And that was, you know, a quote unquote bug. And that has been fixed here with 15.6. So now if I delete the music application, we have Spotify in the dock. Now, if we go into the App Store and download the Apple Music application once again, you could see it no longer replaces is a third-party music player or third-party music application and now puts music on the home screen like every other application. If we go into our settings and go to screen time and then down to a family member right here, you will see that under communication safety, we have a new toggle for improve communication safety. So this will basically just send analytics and data to Apple to help improve this feature. We also have a fix in the books application. So on iOS 15.5, for whatever reason, the books application would completely crash when trying to open up a book. So it doesn't happen every time, but now on 15.6, it just never happens. So you can open up books and switch pages just fine without any crashing issues. This update also finally fixes the storage bug. So you can see here, Apple says, as this update fixes an issue where settings may continue to display that device storage is full even if it is available. So if you go into our settings, general iPhone storage, you should no longer see that pop up right there if you have space left. And you'll also notice that the iPhone storage section just seems to open up faster and load everything faster than it did on 15.5. This update also adds some new features to the TV application. So you can see here, Apple says the TV app adds the option to restart a live sports game already in progress and pause, rewind, or fast forward. So if you go to the watch now tab in the TV application and scroll down until you see the sports section, you will see we have Major League Baseball right here, and then also live sports. If you tap on this, you could see all of the live sports games going on. And now with this update, you will get the option to restart a live sports game that's already in progress. And you also get those playback options as well. If you are a Braille user, this update fixes a very specific issue that would cause Braille devices to slow down or stop responding when navigating text in the mail application. So that should be resolved if you do use Braille. In the shortcuts application, we have a new Safari web permission for while loading web content. This was found in the code by Steve Moser, along with a couple of other things, including some changes in the home application. So if we go into home right here, we do have a couple of changes 
as well. So first off with the HomePod, if you receive a request from a voice that the HomePod doesn't recognize, there are now some new options. Also, when you set up a stereo pair for multiple HomePods, there are some minor verbiage changes on the setup screen. And then also if somebody that you do not recognize invites you to share a home, you now get the option to report that invite as junk. So just like you can do with messages, you can now report home invites as junk. And iOS 15.6 should also fix the iPad mini sixth generation charging issues. So this came out a few weeks ago where a lot of users that had the iPad mini six were not able to charge their device unless they rebooted. And in some instances, they had to completely restore their device just to charge their iPad mini sixth generation. So iOS 15.6 and iPad OS 15.6 should resolve any type of charging issues as well. And when it comes to known issues, issues or any resolved issues. The only one Apple mentions in the release notes is related to the home application and matter accessories. So it says the iOS device that initiates pairing needs to be logged in to the same iCloud account as the home hub. Only the owner of a home, not an invited user, can pair Matter Accessories. And when it comes to security patches, we do also have quite a few security patches here with iOS and iPadOS 15.6 as well. So as always, if you want to be as secure as possible, it is always a good idea to go ahead and update. Now in terms of the performance, performance is about the same as it was on 15.5. We are pretty late in the iOS 15 life cycle. We are gearing up for iOS 16, so it's not really you know expected to see a big jump in performance this late in the game. So don't expect anything major. To me, it's about exactly the same as it was in 15.5. So I would just go ahead and expect that when you update to 15.6. And let's see what our Geekbench scores here. So we got a 1574 on the single core and a 3806 on the multi-core. Pretty respectable scores, but nothing too crazy. And in terms of battery life, again, it's gonna be about the same as it was with the performance. So for me personally, I never had any issues with battery drain on 15.5. However, if you did, then you should probably see an increase here with 15.6. I would assume that any type of battery drain issues have been resolved by now. Again, especially this late in the iOS 15 life cycle, you really shouldn't be having any issues with battery drain. Otherwise, you might want to look at how you're using your phone because that may be the issue. But overall, battery life so far has been exactly the same as 15.5 for me. So now, should you update to iOS 15.6? And I say, yes, there's really no reason not to update to 15.6 if you're on iOS 15.5 or any other version of iOS 15. So you get some security enhancements, you get solid performance, solid battery life, you get some new you know, features in the TV application related to live sports, you get some bug fixes, and there's really nothing bad to say about 15.6. So I would go ahead and update. And if you're on the iPad, especially the iPad mini sixth generation, this is a must download update. You want to be able to charge your iPad. So definitely go ahead and update. But as far as, you know, iPad specific changes, you're not really going to find anything new here in 15.6, but it's still something you should consider upgrading to. All right. So now let's talk about what is coming next for iOS 15 and iOS 16. So next up is most likely going to be a 15.7 beta one. So I would expect Apple to release a first developer beta for 15.7 as early as this week or next week. Now we should see a 15.6.1. I would assume we'd see some type of double point update from now until the time of iOS 15.7 because 15.7 is probably not going to release until the end of August or early to mid September. So we have a lot of time in between there where Apple may just launch a 15.6.1 for some additional bug fixes. And in terms of the public release of iOS 16, that is going to be coming out at the end of September, mid to end of September, whenever Apple decides to announce the iPhone 14s. So there you have it, guys. That is iOS 15.6, an update now available for all devices that can run iOS or iPad OS 15. And I think it's worth updating for almost all users. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 15 and especially iOS 16 coverage coming very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.